Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbit Tree Center, and today we're down in the podcast studio and I wanted to talk about rabbitats, outside open range rabbits, pet rabbits, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of raising rabbits in cage touches. Now, I've heard somebody say before that I would never let my rabbits touch the snow. You know, some folks think that their rabbits just don't have the ability to run through snow and stay warm. And, and I, I can tell you from experience, rabbits can even get their hocks wet. They can even get their dewlap wet when they get into water. They shake it right off. There's so much fur and padding on the hock. They can, they can stand right on ice in below sub-freezing temperatures. I mean, we're down to negative 30s, they're comfortable. And it's really tough for us to, to understand that because we're uncomfortable in those types of, of weather, but they, they're covered from top to bottom in fur and they do really well. In the summertime, this is the hardest time for rabbits. They, they don't do good when it's you know 85 or above. When it's 90 and above, you really gotta watch them because they're prone to heat stress. So it's so important that you understand if you're gonna bring your rabbit inside, you know they're most comfortable when the temperatures are around 50 degrees, 40 degrees, you know, or, or colder. They like it chilly because they're, it's just imagine, you know, being in long johns and, you know, your, your bibs and your coat all the time. So, you know, you may be nice and snuggly near, near the wood burning stove, but that's not where you want to put your, your pet rabbit uh, hutch or cage or whatever, you're, however you're housing them. And if you're going to bring your rabbit indoors, just be aware that they are chewers. They're chewing machines. And, you know, even though they make a great companion and maybe you think that your pet, your dog or your cat should have a, a friend or a companion, be sure to bond those, those rabbits with your dogs or your cats because both dogs and cats love to chase furry little things. And, you know, they're both going to claw them and they're going to, you know, chase them. It's depending on, and folks, you know, they think that often, oh, not my pet. You know, my pet wouldn't do that. But they're still, you know, they're still a dog and a cat. And, and unless you have give these, these animals a chance to bond, and how you do that is you just put up a barrier. You put up a barrier, you give it a few days, and you let them, you know, get used to each other's scent. Then you slowly remove the cage and you monitor the situation. Whatever you do, don't leave them alone because you could come back to uh, a bad scenario. So uh, just be aware of that and still understand that this is a rabbit. Rabbits are very nervous. You know, they're, they're prey animals and they've been hunted from the sky and the ground since the beginning of time. And they're, they're also sensitive digestive systems. You can't necessarily get your rabbit home and start feeding it all these treats because they need to slowly be introduced to food. And I may be telling you stuff you already know, but I just want to kind of go over, you know, your rabbit is uh, a terrific companion and it's going to be a great pet. And I mean, heck, if you're a dog person, there's lop rabbits that have puppy ears. You know, you if you're a cat person, you can put a litter box in the corner and your cat will, or your, your rabbit will go in the litter box. I mean, there's, there's ways to adjust or calibrate your rabbit to indoors. But now folks are raising rabbits open range, colony setups. And, you know, the thumbnail to this video was kindness or carelessness because you can really make a lot of mistakes that are detrimental to the health of your rabbits and this could even mean death for some of them. So it's important that you understand that every animal out there in the woods love rabbit meat. They, they, you know, rabbits have been introduced to every continent except Antarctica since the beginning of time to balance the ecosystem. Rabbits traditionally have been here to feed the wild and they still feed the world. There's several people farming rabbits all over the world. And you know, my wife raised rabbits for pets when she was a kid. I don't have any problem with people raising rabbits however they want to because I understand that they have all these different strengths. Yeah, I don't really think anybody should get on somebody else's channel and try to tell them how or what to do with their rabbit. It's their, it's their rabbit. But I want to explain, you know, a little bit about why cage touches are a thing and why rabbits are raised like that. So rabbits, when you share open ground, that opens up challenges as far as, you know, there's something called coccidiosis. And this is a disease that is transmitted through manure and diseased manure and bloody stool. And when another rabbit comes in contact with that, 
uh, they will they will transmit that disease and it's very contagious and it will wipe out your herd so that's why folks raise their rabbits above ground so to keep the manure like in caged wire bottoms they have that because the manure and the, the uh, urine, it falls through the cage floor bottom and it keeps your rabbit clean. It, it kills the, the life cycle of coccidiosis and it prevents that disease. Also, when you're raising your rabbits in a colony setup with cage wire, a fenced cage wire, um, it's really important to understand that there are certain diseases out there that are transmitted from wild rabbits that come up to the cage wire. You know, there's something called rabbit fever, tularemia, and things like RHD, RHD2, rabbit hemorrhagic disease. There's also something called snuffles, myxomatosis. These things will wipe out your rabbits. And in most cases, folks don't want to hear this, but in most cases, rabbit colonies and open range rabbits, they last about three to five years on, on average. They fall victim to predators, they fall, you know, they escape. Now this isn't everybody, this isn't everybody's situation. If you're living in like say a, a, sub, a suburb or something like that with, that doesn't have an HOA breathing down your neck and you're able to have rabbits, of course you're gonna have less predators. You know, you're still gonna have hawks that, are, that can come down and, and take your rabbits out, but you probably will have less raccoons, less foxes, less, you know, predators like that. Now we live backed up, we live in a very rural area and we live backed up to public land where we have lots of foxes and raccoons and other predators, snakes coming through and you know we have to take serious precautions and run security. There's even been times when we've ran um, trail cameras to try to find out what's coming around our rabbitry and if you want to hear more about that see a see a video on you know what's killing my rabbits or predators uh, I can put a video up in the corner for you if you're living in that kind of area it's not that crazy to actually fence in around your fenced in rabbit uh, rabbit hat or, or colony setup because that will keep more predators away just like a chicken coop you want to completely enclose that because hawks Hawks are pretty bad. I mean, they are the best pilots in the sky. We have this black locust patch where we have, you know, trees every 12 inches, and those hawks will fly through the, the black locust patch and then come down on a squirrel, and we'll hear a quick little squeal, and we'll know something just got uh, killed by a hawk. You know, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. And there's been times when we've lost chickens due to that. And raccoons are really bad where we live, so we have to make sure everything's locked up and, and we burrow down our cage wire because, you know, not just predators coming in, but your rabbits, they love to burrow. In the summertime, they're going to burrow down and they're going to get down where it's cold because it's so, it's you know, they're so hot and they're prone to heat stress or heat stroke that they want to get where, down where it's cool. And a lot of times people don't burrow down their cage wire surrounding and they'll escape. You know, my grandpa had uh, lots of farm animals. He had 80 acre farm and uh, he had a, an open range set up with rabbits and it wasn't long before all the rabbits were either they lost them to predators or they just escaped and then eventually got killed by predators because domesticated rabbits are not cottontails and cottontails have the ability to evade. They, you know, through generation after generation, they've they've learned how to evade predators and in you know most cases even cottontails only live an average of two years because predators are preying on them and they don't really sleep they they barely sleep because of that we run a lot of trail cameras for our deer on our food plots as well as we have food plots for for rabbits too and we'll watch the rabbits come out of brush piles they'll eat a little bit then they'll go back into the brush pile you know they really don't walk around willy-nilly because they know that they have to be very very careful that's why rabbits do so well in small spaces they don't take up a lot of space and they'll still stay productive in these caged wire hutches because uh, that's just it's drilled into their brain and this has been going on for thousands of years folks want to raise their rabbits like cottontails but they're not the same they're not they're a distant cousin and but they're not they don't even if they were to breed the the embryos would never make it because they don't have that genetic link the the chromosomes don't line up also if you're going to run an open range setup make sure you have a lot of structure and things that rabbits can run under 
to give them a chance to stay away from hawks, um, even totes or bur something like where there's some sort of security where they can get away from a raccoon and hide from a predator if they come around. So it's just really important to understand that you know rabbits just don't have the the skills like a cottontail you know a domesticated rabbit will sleep you know sometimes eight to ten hours in their cage or, or if they were a, a pet so but they're very very different and I just think that um, a lot of folks look at these cage hutches and they don't understand why they're being raised in cages it's because when you have open range or habitat situations you know there's a lot of fighting because there is a hierarchy there is rabbits that are dominant there's a lot of clawing and, and pinning uh, they pin each other for dominance and, and they're gonna have to work that out and after they get done beating the heck out of each other they finally know who's in charge and who the big boss is the, the boss bunny and and you know a lot of times when when the does uh, the females will have litters they'll be very territorial over their litter so they want to defend that litter and there's fighting when that goes down so um, it's important to understand that you're going to have injuries and if you're trying to run uh, say a production then you know this is why folks run their their rabbits in cages because of all these reasons they run them 40 inches high in cage touches to make sure that predators can't get to them all the foxes and the raccoons are crawling underneath the cage the wild cottontails aren't coming in contact because of all those diseases that can be transmitted they're separating them because the breeding, when you have open range or colony setups, it's uncontrollable. And when they do have litters, you don't know who belongs to who or how old they are or what the story is. Not to mention all the, the, the ticks and fleas and worms from sharing open ground. And we talked about coccidiosis already. You know, you're going to have to deworm these rabbits. You're going to have to, I know the list goes on and on. You know, you'll have to, to diatomaceous earth their burrows and the rabbits from time to time or they're just going to be suffering from fleas. And we run a certain setup where we're selling most of our rabbits. Most of our rabbits are breeders or pets. And that's just our system. You know, some folks raise their rabbits and they run them in tractors for different purposes. Uh, they're trying to supplement their feed costs. But that again, if you were to sell that rabbit, um, it may have fleas or it may have other you know problems so that's why we run them in cage touches because we can control everything we can keep these rabbits safe from predators safe from battling from injuries and we can control the breeding and you know studies have shown that these rabbits need 0.5 cubic feet, 0.6 cubic feet if it's a, a mama doe with a litter. There's always a reason for this. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I see a lot of people arguing and spending a lot of time and energy attacking other people. And you know, and what I've noticed is it doesn't matter what it is. There's always some sort of segregation. There's always one side here and one side there. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm not just super passionate about raising rabbits. I'm, I also love uh, deer hunting. I also love farming. Uh, I also love beekeeping. And you know, it, it's so weird because you have you always have this segregation. Like with rabbits, it's colony or cages. With beekeeping, it's treatment free or folks that treat their bees with oxalic acid. You know, uh, deer hunting, it's high fence or open range. You know, it cultivating or farming, it's cultivating or no till. You know, it's it's all this stuff, and there's always a reason for why. You know, cultivating. Some folks don't cultivate because a lot of people can't get the equipment in there. Maybe they don't have the budget to run manure or, or purchase a bunch of lime to get their soil back to neutral. I think, you know, this passion gets the best of us sometimes and we just start going off on a tangent and, and really I don't think it's necessary. I, I'm, I'm not going to ever try to tell somebody how to live or what to do with their rabbits. You know, now I can't say that I don't have mixed feelings sometimes when somebody takes a rabbit home and they call me and say we lost a rabbit because the dog attacked a rabbit can i get another rabbit you know in some cases instead of just arguing with that person and, and trying to tell them you know no i'm not going to sell you another rabbit i'll you know i'll just tell them i'll make an executive decision and i'll, I'll just say we don't have any available anymore or at this time because if i think you know it's important that folks really do exercise discipline and and try to take precautions and if they're not you know i can't make them so I just try to prepare my customers the best I can and explain as much as I can and let them know if they ever have any questions or, or comments, they can always text me or email me at bobby at the rabbitrycenter.com. You know, we're all going to raise our rabbits differently. And, you know, I, I think that it's important that you don't 
waste your energy or your precious time on on earth to try to tell somebody how to raise their rabbits but you know as far as educating folks when you're selling rabbits and trying to do the best you can to let them know the dangers you know understanding you know the how sensitive they are with their digestive system you know that's okay but trying to tell folks how to raise them and, and what they're can and can't do you know sometimes you just have to let them learn learn the hard way you'll get crazy customers too that will try to blame you for for their you know mistakes or their carelessness and you know so that's why I titled this video kindness or carelessness because you really have to leave it up to the customer to make these mistakes and you know sometimes folks just don't want to take responsibility for that you know colony setups can be very dangerous and cage setups are the, the safest way to raise your rabbits and you know our rabbitry isn't too big because we try to give every rabbit uh, the attention that they deserve you know if our rabbitry gets too big we're not able to care for them all in the same way it doesn't take long to make more rabbits and your rabbitry can grow and grow really really fast we have a rabbitry production here and it's not a pet rabbit or open colony setup but I completely understand why folks want to do that I mean I, I and I'm not gonna bash those people you know folks we've got so many other problems in the world to, to worry about you know folks that have a colony set up I've always looked at it kind of like you know pet these are pet people or just pet parents or these are people that you know maybe even call their dog kiddo and you know our dog passed last year and I tell you what that was that was a family member uh, Roxy gave us 13 years of good memories and it took us a long time to um, just you know not stop hurting uh, because that I understand how much joy a pet rabbit or a pet or a companion can give you and you know running a, a rabbitat or an open range you know, habitat for rabbits that certainly presents challenges and running rabbits in caged hutches it may seem cruel but these rabbits have been raised like that for generation after generation because of safety because of breeding control and you know the the challenge with that is you have to be disciplined with a diet because they don't have as much running around or exercise and it, it it's safe but it means that the rabbitry has to run uh, a, a disciplined food program and you know they're, they they have to keep their rabbits breeding to keep their weights in check and there's certain challenges there so but again I think it's it's important that we don't bash each other we should try to get along and and I'm certainly not going to try to tell you how to raise your rabbits and uh, life is short you know I mean there's there's other problems like you know people that are identifying as rabbits you know Therians. so this person wants to drop their kid off and then go pee on the playground lawn as, because they think they're a dog so I'm just joking I mean that's a joke but that's actually a real thing google it so but so we have other problems in this world so we shouldn't try to argue with each other enjoy your rabbitat we all love rabbits and understand we're all raising them for different reasons we all have different goals so um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you for listening and thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video